and the crusade and hear the word of God, the Lord, bring your friends out and let them be saved by the mighty power of God. You see, it is too late for us to, to be stuck and be hiding uh, along the way. This is no time for God's people to be wasting time. We have a great and powerful message to present to the people the message of the coming of the Lord. You see. Amen. Amen. Let's go. So Gideon and his servant were encouraged after spying that night in the enemy camp and realizing how powerless the people felt against the Lord of Israel. Let's go. Then the three companies blew the trumpets and blew the preachers. Uh, they, they held the torches in their left hand. You see, Gideon had instructed them exactly what they needed to do. And we give them instruction as to exactly what we want you to do in this school. That's why I put up the, the, the thing with the timeline. All those of you who are participating, you know what you have to do. You go up and you do it in this match and get the work done and we'll move on to feel by 9 o'clock. Exactly. If you think it can happen, just come up and, 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 and do it for yourself. <laughs> yes. At 9 o'clock every night, we're going to leave here. That's what comes as a promise. I hope I can keep it, you know, with your, <laughs> with your cooperation. We're going to keep that promise. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. So, they held, no, they held the torches in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hands for blowing. And, and they cried what? Sword. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Let's go. And every man. Every man stood in this place all around the camp. And the whole army ran and cried out and fled. When the 300 blew the trumpets, the Lord set every man sword against his companion throughout the whole camp. Let's move on. So 300 soldiers with trumpets sounding in their right hand and torches shining in their left hand were God's loyal instruments of trying to right there. Stay right there. You see, again, we ask ourselves a question. What does it really take? We're coming to an end here now. What does it really take to be a soldier for Jesus Christ? And I've already given you the three words. It takes what? Number one, commitment. Number two, courage. And number three, number three what? Okay, number, number one is what? Conviction. Number two, courage. And number three, Let's see what happens here with Gideon. Come to an end. You see, in Judges chapter 6 and verse 37, 34, it says that what the Spirit is the Lord, came up the Spirit of the Lord then he came up upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpet. And the Abbey's right gathered me. You see, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you see, the work of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is to convict men of sin and of righteousness and to lead them into all truth. So when the Spirit of God comes upon you, that's what brings uh, conviction, isn't it so? So when the Spirit of God came upon Gideon, he was convicted that he was moving, he was moving in the, in the right direction. So he had that conviction to start the And that's what moved him forward. Let's go. Next one. We need that conviction in our lives. And then in verses 7 and 8, he says, and he said to them, no, no, you see, Gideon was a man who led by example. Yes, he was such a courageous guy, he's, he's, he realized that he had to show them what to do. And he had to model that behavior for them. He said, look at me. He said, what? Look at me. me. I know what? Do likewise. Watch. And when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. When I blow the trumpet. Well, I'm telling you, when the evangelist comes out here night after night and blow the trumpet, you've got to come and hold up the evangelist's hand and give support. And bring your friends and your neighbors and your family members and bring them to hear the word of the Lord as the evangelist, as the servant of God, blows the trumpet in the land so that people can come and be saved in God's kingdom. He said, when I blow the trumpet, I am all who are with me. Then you also blow the trumpet on every side of the whole camp and say, the sword of the Lord. That's what he told them to say. That's why they said, they knew exactly what they were to do. They knew exactly what they were to say. And so this was a courageous one because if you within yourself do not have the courage, then you're not going to be able to direct people 
who the one be following uh, your command. So he was a courageous man. So he told them, look at me. Do what I do. And let's move forward together under the mighty command of God, who is your captain. What do you say? So let's move on. He was a courageous man. He had the courage. And then finally, he had the commitment of the mother. He says, and the army went to where? Beth Acacia. Toward the Sevilla, as far as the mountain of Abel Mehola, like a bath. And the men of Israel gathered together from Naphne, Asher, and all Manasseh, and pursued the rock. They pursued in just stay one place. When, when, they, when they recognized that they had the thing under control and that God was fighting on their behalf, they did not just relax their effort. They did what? They increased their effort. And they pursued. They wanted to make sure that the job was done and was done completely. What do you say? That's commitment. That's commitment. When you start a thing, you want to make sure that it Finish. is completed right to the end, just as God desires that it should be done. I'm telling you, it does not make sense for you to start out on the road, on the Christian road, and then somewhere along the way you falter and you drop out. It makes sense, as the Bible says, to endure unto the end, for he who endures unto the end, the same shall be saved, what you say. So he pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and see These were two princes, two of the princes of Midian. Brought them to Gideon. Gideon was the commander. And they made sure that they got the job done and got it done completely. They had that commitment. They never slackened their efforts until the job was complete. Let's move on. So Gideon understood that victory for God's people. Require a plan of conviction. Of what? Conviction. In other words, conviction and what else? Courage. Courage and what else? Commitment. And commitment. And by faith, he exempted, and that's why his name is listed there in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, as one of the men of faith. Because by faith, we are told, he exemplified that experience of having that conviction, oh, by the Holy Spirit. The courage that propelled him forward to, to be an example to his soldiers and to cause him to move right to the end with commitment, making sure that the job was done well and was done completely. What you say? That's how we're going to move forward, moving forward in this crucial one. You say, and we need the hands of everyone, the heads and the hands and the hearts of everyone in this congregation, and as many as much help as we can get to move forward. Under the banner of Prince Manuel, what do you say? Yeah. Let's move on. So, I don't know if we have a song, no. No, no, no. Okay, but it's not going to be a beautiful song that talks about what it really takes. The song says, It takes you all. It takes you all. To be a soldier of Jesus Christ. It takes everything that you have. When you put your heart and soul into the work of the Lord, God will bless your efforts, what you say. Yeah. This is no time for any of us to be slacking off our efforts. We have all kinds of concerns and problems and issues in our lives, all kinds of challenges and obstacles in our families, in our, at our workplaces, in our, in, in, uh, in our educational institutions, in the community, uh, all around this land. I'm telling you, all kinds of problems we face. But the problem that we face, I'm telling you, God has the solution to the problem. Yeah. And we need to elect and encourage the people of this land to come out to this place from the 15th of May, right under the 28th of May, to hear about the solution that God has to solve the problem of the world and the problem of this land. Amen. And all of us, we're going to be doing it together, they say, under the mighty hand of God. Are you ready to move forward last year? Are you ready to move forward? It's not about me. It's not about me. I don't have to be the one to win somebody else. But God wants this job done. I know that for sure. God wants 
ce soir, nous te sommes And I guess, I guess I am that gray-haired man that Elliot spoke about, Elliot spoke about two weeks ago. A gray-haired man. They say we don't want to use anymore the gray-haired man. We want to use the young man. And I believe in that. But you see, Mazzy, for this time, bro, as Adrian said, we're going to use the great hair man. <laughs> but as long as God is in it, we will be this what he said. Amen. Let us stand as we come into our lives to God. Let the Adrian put you come and pray. A prayer of commitment. A prayer of commitment. So that the people of God still might be blessed. And encourage as we move forward into this great and mighty task. Every day, us. They are the one who nurture us, who cradle us, who mold us, 
who increase our faith and who turn our eyes towards you when we falter. We ask for faith, we ask for trust, we ask for endurance from them. God is why and this afternoon you ask us to ask for your power, your power, so that we may have courage, we may have faith, we may have belief, because you have asked us to go, to go out there and let people know that you are the only Savior, the only Savior of this dark sin world. So here we are, all we are. It is you we come to, and there is no time. It is you we call upon because there is no other one. Oh God, we expected hundreds of people to run to the altar. But it's not so, Lord. It's you we call upon. He wants your spirit to come down to this place now. You have done it before. When you enter into a place, there is death or life. Somebody can get life and somebody can die now. It has happened before and it can happen again. You say anything that you want, you can ask for it. We ask for your Holy Ghost to move pew to pew. Line by line. Bench by bench, touch hearts, wrestle, convict. Oh God, may people say, I yield, I yield, I yield, because there is no other. May your power to come upon us. May we give ourselves unreserved. Oh God, equip us so that. We, like the 300 of Gideon, may have the conviction, the courage, and the commitment. In Jesus' name we ask, you see us in your power. Father, in a special way, we place before you our evangelists. Oh God, as it were, I lay my hands upon his head. There is no power in me, but you have asked us that anything that we ask you will grant it. I want your power to become to come upon this man. Oh God, you said we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us. Anoint him now. Give him the power. You are fighting. Give him the wisdom, the bundle of knowledge that he requires. Oh God, come with me into your purpose. In the name of Jesus, we call it done. We thank you, we praise you, we magnify you. In Jesus' name. And it is because it is you we come to. And there is no other.